It does happen from time to time that we want to have more control over the value of a variable or a parameter during a simulation run or when actually setting up a simulation run. In this video, I'm going to show you how we control the value of a variable using a slider as a control. So let's create a new model, which I'm going to call two controls. And using the process modeling library, we're going to build a very simple model whereby we, whereby we create an entity, add it to a queue, delay it for a specific time, and then dispose of the entity. The inter-arrival time of entities, we want to be a function of some variable which we will control as well as the delay that should also be a function of this variable. So let's go to our agent collection and add a variable to our workspace, which I'm just going to call var value. So variable value. I'm going to make this type integer and the initial value should be 10. We can make it a double as well, but when we use sliders, if you have a look at the help function, it is recommended that you rather use a slider with integer values. All right. The initial value is 10. So I make my, I go to my source block and I change my arrivals that they are defined by an inter-arrival time. And I change the default to just variable value. Which means that roughly about, well, every 10 seconds, an entity will actually be created. That is how I want this variable value to be interpreted for the source. If I go to my delay function here, I want to keep the triangular distribution. And I'm going to make the delay time half that variable value. The mode should be once the variable value and I'm going to make the distribution skewed by changing the maximum value to twice the variable value. So if I now save my model and I run it, I'm faced with a simulation screen where there are no instructions. I can't really set up my experiment so I just click on run. And I wait until 10 seconds when I will see the first entity being created. And there it is. So I can speed up my model. And I can see that there's a slight buildup from time to time in the queue. And that is because of the uncertainty in the delay function. The fact that it follows a triangular distribution. The queue never build up kind of that fast. Um, and it is worked away from time to time as well. But there's no control. I cannot control variable value. So let's add the controls. This model is built in version 7.2, the personal learning edition. And you have the luxury of just selecting your variable value, right clicking, say con create control, and you can actually immediately create a slider of some sort or a control and an edit box as well. I want the minimum value to be one and the maximum value to be 50. And I also want to add labels. And what that will do is it will let any logic show me what the minimum and the maximum values are of the slider, as well as what the current value of the variable is that it is linked to. And it is automatically linked to variable value. So if I now save and run my model, I can speed it up again. And now if I actually change the value to let's say 22, I see that the entities um, take much longer to actually be created. And if I reduce the value to a much smaller time, I actually see that entities are created at a much faster rate in terms of the inter-arrival time being very short. Or I can make it very long and I've got dynamic control over my variable value. So that is one way of controlling the value of a variable.
That might be useful in an operational model where you need to kind of intervene and interfere with variable values during a simulation run. But very often when you do decision support and you want to evaluate different scenarios, you should not or do not want to interfere during the execution of a simulation run. Um, but you want an easy way to set up your simulation so that for the entire duration of the simulation, a particular value will be used um, for that simulation run. In that case, it might, it is more appropriate to use a parameter instead of a variable. Because a parameter sh should stay fixed for the duration of the run. So let's take out our variable value and its slider. And instead we're going to add a parameter. And here we use the prefix PAR value. It should also be of type integer and its default value should also be 10. Now I'm just going to edit my source to not make use of variable value, but my parameter value. And similarly, my delay should now be a function of the parameter value. To now add control to this parameter value, I'm going to go to my projects view and double click on my simulation view. And this is the view that pops up at the start of my simulation run. So this is where I can set up my, my simulation. And for this purpose, I'm going to add a variable over here. Usually I will put it outside of the view, um, but for now to just show what we're doing, I will add it so that we can observe its value. This variable I'm going to call variable value. It too will be an integer and its initial value will also be 10. And I can control this variable value again by right clicking, creating a control and a slider, which I will just put on top of it. Minimum value again one, maximum value 50, and I want the labels to actually be added. If I don't select anything on my simulation page, we see that because there is a parameter, my main model, it actually allows me to control this from the simulation page. The parameter value is default 10, which is what I set it in my main model. But what I now want to do is I want to link the parameter value in my main model to this variable value, which is on the simulation setup screen. And what this will do is if I save my model, and I run it. My simulation will start off by giving me control. Before I click the run button, I now have the possibility to change the value of variable value. So let's make it 20. Oops. And if I now click my run button, the parameter value in my model will also change to 20. If I now stop my model and I go back and I set it to something shorter and I run it again, the parameter value is updated. But for the entire simulation run, it will stick with this parameter value. So this is the second and I believe the more appropriate way of using controls to control variable values, or specifically parameter values inside your model. Um, so when you set up an experiment, you can set all the different parameter values in your kind of your cover screen or your splash screen and your, kind of your simulation setup page and then click the run button. And for that particular simulation or that particular scenario, the parameters are set. So you don't have to go into your model and manually go and change the values because then you might just forget um, what the parameter values were and miss one or two. Right, so two ways of controlling variables and parameters 
using sliders in your model. Have fun modeling.